So, um, start recording. Okay, so should we? Start yeah, let's then? let's we do it because I got about well, I, I've got an interview in about forty minutes. So, forty minutes ago. Forty minutes. Um, okay. Glad you guys uh, finally did uh, it though. Start recording. I and I'm I've got an okay. audio recording going on my side at the same time, so I can drop you the audio file as soon as I'm done. Sorry. I've got I'm running an audio recording at the same okay. time. Still there. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. Okay, thanks. I, I'm gonna put, uh, that'd be, I'm gonna yeah, put, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay, yeah. As soon as I'm done, I will drop you the audio file, and I'm gonna use my okay. So headphones start, to make it a little easier. Yeah. I'm still here. Okay, it's gonna be a little scattered, but okay. we'll we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Thank you a lot, by the way. Um. Okay, so the first question is, um, why? I mean, what was the motivation from going? Oh, well, to a flat oh, oh, um, it was mostly just looking at a lot of different things on YouTube, uh, looking at just about every conspiracy you could think of. And I was kind of bored with just about everything else that was out there. Uh, and I thought I would click mm. on Flat Earth and give it a yeah, try. Yeah, okay. And and I thought, OK, well, everybody knows that yeah, flat, okay. flat Earth is stupid. It's ridiculous. I don't want to I don't want to look at it, but I, so I should be able to disprove it in a weekend. And that was the worst thing ever to where nine months later, there I was banging my head on the keyboard saying, okay, I can't prove the globe anymore. So I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues and put it out there and then yeah, everything yeah, yeah. just took off and here we are four years later. Mm, and obviously you have a huge YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> it's pretty big. It's actually, I believe it or yeah, not, it I get, I get yeah. more hits on the mirrors of my channel than I do the actual channel, which is weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's weird. Um, yeah, so this sort of links into a, my, uh, my next question. Um, how does it feel to be at the forefront of one of the most misrepresented uh, groups in society? I mean, um, yeah. It, it's weird. <laughs> uh, it's very, it's weird. a mixed, it's a mixed bag, meaning, uh, I mean, there's some days it's really great, uh, you know, that there's a lot, of, I get emails every hour from people that are saying, oh yeah, you, you totally woke me up and it's fantastic. But at the same time, you know, yeah. there's articles in mainstream every week now that cr mm -hmm. still criticize us, which is fine. You know, I, I don't mind. Look, mainstream science is going to push back eventually, and we've heard it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, I mean, like National Geographic mm -hmm. came after us big time uh, not too long ago, and, oh, okay. and I expected okay, it. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. Um, flat earthers and scientists have very similar motives like finding the, finding the truth right but yeah find, finding the truth uh, use experimental evidence to, to you know find what's really going on mm -hmm. um but why are they so different i mean they have such different views on well how the world was. It, there was a thing that nikola tesla said a long time ago and he he said that science tends to build ten, hang on sorry i've got to hang up on somebody the um science tends to build on each other without looking at the core mm. foundation to where the yeah, yeah. you know equation on top of equation and once you get to a certain height the equations up at that level mean nothing because nobody checked the the base equations to begin with um the reason why it's so different okay. is science yeah. kind of over the last 500 years became more of a religion than they knew you know it jumped from science to scientism mm. and by that i mean they realized at some point like many religions do uh, that people will believe once a, once a religion or in this case science is established, people will believe you. It's like, well, you got a good track record so far. And then that, you know, the abuse of power. So when a scientist comes out and says, look, I'll tell you what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level. Yeah. yeah. Fine. I can mm -hmm. totally test that. Then they come out and say, oh yeah, this is what the core of the earth looks like. And I go, really? Because it's 4,000 yeah. miles to the center and you've only drilled down eight miles. How can you tell me with the core? Well, we're pretty sure. It's like, well, you have no idea. No, we don't have any idea. But we're scientists, so you got to believe us. Uh, yeah. It's like, wow. Well, and they do that with a yeah. lot of stuff. And so that's yeah, the, yeah. The, the difference between them and us is that we're, com we're coming up with really simple experiments to prove just a, yeah, few, yeah. a few points. And they've got a body of work that spans yeah. five centuries. So that's the difference. And yeah, that, that was that was an experiment you did in your Netflix documentary. 
where you simply just look across a body of water and right. saw Seattle. I mean, right, right, yeah. right. And that was that wasn't even a good experiment because there was a hill in the way. I mean, if you and it was part of the island, mm. you could have taken that out of the way and you would have mm. seen a big chunk of the buildings. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. that in fact, it was something I even didn't even talk about in the clues, which was the experiments that people were just coming up with on their own, which is experiments you couldn't do 20 years ago, like going to any beach and looking across it with an HD camera with digital zoom and seeing objects that should not be there. And the reason why it's missed yeah, yeah. It, by most people is the 99 percent of the people on the street do not know what the curvature of the earth is Yeah, in terms of mathematics, at least what mainstream mm, science yeah. tells you. And if they don't know that, they just assume whatever they're seeing is real. Uh, to, to quote a line from The Truman Show, we believe the world that is presented to us. That is, yeah, that, that's that's true on a number of levels, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think there's a famous quote from your documentary at the very start, actually, where you said, hey, um, the reason why we're winning against science is because... Um, what was it? It was, yeah, the reason why we're winning against science is because we have experimental evidence, whereas science just throws maths at you. Um, right, right, right. And science, yeah, si uh, science. The question I had was, maths, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, say that one more time. Sorry, I can't, uh, poor uh, network connection. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, you said uh, the reason why we're winning The reason why we're winning is, be is, is because science tries to, yeah, tr science tries to beat us with math. And mathematics won't do it. And I've tried to tell scientists right right up to their face. Yeah. I'm saying, look, math will not save you in this case. Um, and the reason is, and again, we'll use the, the curvature of the earth formula, where is, and I don't think I said this in the documentary. I go, you average, ask the average person. I go, and I tell them, I say, okay, the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile. And people are like, I'm totally with you. And then I go, squared. And then they just glaze over and they forget everything that they learned in high school uh, algebra. And, and, I, and that's when I knew right then and there. It's like if the average person okay. doesn't mm -hmm. even remember uh, anything about algebra when they went to school and science comes back <laughs> yeah. and they try to throw them geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics and all that other stuff, they, 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 you might as well be just playing them static because they aren't hearing it. And so we come up with really simple, why the clues did so well, I, you know, simple arguments that people can get their heads around. And science cannot, for whatever reason, either they don't want to or they can't, dumb down yeah. the argument enough to match that. And that's why we keep winning. And then there's some denial. It's like, oh, you aren't winning. It's like, man, you haven't seen the numbers. We're crushing you right now. And they, they're just in denial. It's like they're, uh, used, they're an ostrich. They've got their heads in the sand. They don't know what to do. Yeah, um, that, that's yeah, that's something I had a question about. I mean, isn't math something? I mean, there, there's no bias in math. There's, it's just numbers. I mean, well, uh, to a certain how, degree, you can't really sure. Disprove it because Ma math is the universal true. language, one is of course. And there's a lot of people that you know, math. Yeah, yeah. Math will take you so far, but the app. Here's the here's the problem. We've got mathematics that ninety something percent of the population does not use and never will use. And of course, yes, you need geometry and building, mm -hmm. you need yeah. algebra for this and that, and you need calculus. Well, you really only need calculus for space, from what I understand. Yeah. And then quantum mechanics, that's just space too. So, <laughs> yeah, some look, math has been around for a long time, and it can help with certain things. But when scientists, no offense to you guys, but I mean, if scientists and math geeks just keep working on these better and better equations, it's like, okay, but do they help the common man? Do they affect the common man? And if they don't, well, what, what, what do you what do you think is going to happen? You know, the common man's just doing ignore it. Okay, yeah, that's an yeah, that's an interest, interesting view, right? Um, oh, right, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, I said that's an interesting view. Yeah, so yeah, can you? Hear me? Well, yeah, just just so you know, we've got what? like a I don't know, like a six or seven not, second um, lag. Oh, you can't. Okay, cool. Um, kind of. <laughs> uh, what about now? Well, it really depends. Uh, yeah, I think it kind of comes and goes. So if I say one, two, three, say one, two, three. Okay. Um, uh, would you? Okay. Yeah, um, that's expected. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. One, two, three. Wow. Okay, just so you know, we've got like a 10-second lag in here. So just ask your question, and I will try to give you as much room as you can. Do you hear me? 
Okay, how about now? Hello? Yep, yep, I'm here. Okay. Um, is there any like this time? I don't uh, not yet. I mean, it may be buffering after a while. Let's just give it a shot. So I think okay. where we left off was gravity. Yeah, gravity. Okay, so gravity, real quick. Uh, mainstream science says that they can't tell you what exactly what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. They can only tell you the symptoms of it because they can't replicate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. gravity for us, or at least for me, is really the same, almost the same as what gravity is for mainstream science. And what I mean by that is, uh, gravity is a molecular magnetic force that pulls things down. And yeah. mainstream yeah. science says it's a molecular magnetic force, you know, invisible force that pulls things to the center, also pulls things down, but it pulls it to the center of a ball. There's really not that much difference yeah. there. Um, there are some people in Flat Earth that say it's buoyancy and that it's based on air pressure alone, kind of like when you put a beach ball in the water, you know, it pops yeah. up to the, to the surface. But that wouldn't mm -hmm. account for, I don't know, everything from a fighter pilot to somebody in a car. Because technically, yeah, yeah. When, when you're in a car and you hit, hit, hit the gas and all the windows are roll up, there's no buoyancy coming at you and yet you're pushed to the back of the yeah. seat. Yeah. Same thing with an airplane. So it's not that it's really not that much different at all. Um, look, we do it, and okay. not that we should get into simulation theory, but um, we do it in physics engines all the time. I don't know why, but your Skype keeps trying to call me from an unknown number. You don't have your phone oh. dialing me too, do you? Uh, I hope not. Uh, let me check. That's okay. I don't. I don't think so. I'm using my laptop, but. All right, because I've got an unknown phone number that's been calling me like three or four times, but that's okay. We'll just uh, keep going. We got. Yeah, we I got 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so have we been to the moon or in space? Uh, have we been to the moon or space? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, it's way worse than that. Meaning not only was the American space program faked, but everybody else's were. And the question of space, why does there have to be space? If you're inside a building, a giant planetarium, and all the planets and the stars are just lights on the ceiling, then space is just inside a box. And so, yeah, the, no, the, the space program is absolute fabrication. Look, if, from an American point of view, like I'm on the American side, we've been, we've been doubting yeah. ourselves okay. the American space program since the late 1970s. And, but we couldn't figure out why. It's like, why would we fake it? Other than, of course, you know, wave yeah. the flag, rah, rah, America's the greatest. Uh, but the, the space program footage has aged horribly. The Apollo photos are abysmally bad nowadays. And, you know, but to their credit, they didn't know in 1969 that we were going to have the Internet and high definition television monitors and social networking and people sharing a yeah. bunch of stuff. So, yeah, all the space program is utterly, completely fake. It's completely fake, is it? Yep. Okay. Um, so the dome, let's talk about the dome. Sure. What's on the other side of it? What do you want to be on the other side of it? Because right now we can't get past it. And that was one of the points of my clues, which was, you know, the atomic West weapon testing by the United States and the Soviet Union from 58 to 62, where they just fired weapons straight up for four years. And they were trying to punch through this thing. And so what's outside of it? I'd like to think it was an unlimited universe. I'd like to think there was more of us out there. Yeah. So there's more snow globes lying around. Uh, heck, we could be on a yeah, yeah. we could we could be on a lab table. We could be on God's desk. Who knows what's on the outside of this thing? I like, try to try to live one world okay. at a time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, who built this dome? Then I mean, well, at that point you who got even built it. You, you got a um. It's one of two things. It's which luckily for us, and that is, it wasn't us. Definitely, the human beings did not build this thing. Uh, however, it is either okay. a highly advanced civilization, much older than ourselves, okay. or uh, or it's the divine. So take your pick. And since half of our community okay. is strong religious, you know, they, they lean towards the divine side and the other people, it's like, okay, well, yeah. it's just an advanced machine. Hmm. So extraterrestrial life built it. Oh, it's a good question. And that is, are there extraterrestrials? If we are in a dome, because remember, mm. if the if Mars and Venus and all that are just lights in the sky, yeah, yeah. then whoever's flying around up there, and I do believe there's things flying around up there. I've seen them with night vision many times, uh, are not from Venus and Mars. They're probably older versions of us 
older versions of our civilization. Because I don't think uh, by any stretch that we are the first civilization to rent this apartment. I mean, there's there's evidence all over the place. The sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, Bosnian pyramids, Bimini Road, the real pyramids. Yeah, yeah. It goes on and on. I, I think I don't know what version we are here, but uh, we're definitely not the first. Okay. So how did the universe start? I mean, <laughs> the, the wow, you got some big questions. Uh, I mean, like, how do I think the Big Bang happened? <laughs> uh, that's well, that's just there's your there's your science versus religion argument right there. And yeah, that is, yeah. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you because the Big Bang, you know, mainstream science says there was a Big Bang that created everything, including the universe and space. And I'm saying, no, the mm -hmm. universe we're not living in this vast universe. We're living in a giant studio apartment and whatever's outside of this place isn't space. It is not what you would ever define as space. It wouldn't be whatever yeah, created yeah. this would be so yeah. efficient that they wouldn't create a vast universe. That's made out of 99.9% .9 nothing. Uh, even, even Carl Sagan said that he was like, wow, it seems like an awful waste of space. Yeah, it would be unless it's an illusion in which case it's not a waste of space at all. It's just lights in the sky. Well, if you look into deep space, you can actually see that it's redshifted, which implies that it's actually moving away from us sure. quicker and quicker. So sure, unless... Is that just the dome? Yeah, yeah. Or... I mean, unless you're talking about... Get to remember, we didn't even have HD televisions 20 years ago. So imagine what sort of resolution system we can come up with in 100 years. Uh, have somebody look up if you get a chance. We developed this, I think, like five years ago. Um, skylights you can put in your basement that simulate a sun and a clear blue sky, and the sun will actually follow you uh, in perspective, which is amazing. Uh, so when it comes to a display system that's on the roof that can be redshifted, or mm -hmm. I don't know, I call it Mandelbrot resolution, and that is it will adapt to the object that is viewing it, very similar to the double slit experiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. So on your email, I saw you had a image of a flat Earth university. Right. Is that actually a thing? Or... Uh, no, no. It is totally metaphorical, uh, the Flat Earth University. It was sort of a thing that I, I I'm not going to say that I coined it uh, because there's other people that made the flag and, and did the other stuff. But I, everyone okay, wanted yeah. to know what my role was in Flat Earth. And I said, well... If it was a university, I would be the freshman recruiter. I would be the one that gets you in the door. It's like, okay, you want to learn some fun stuff? Here's mm -hmm. Flat Earth University. There's all sorts of different buildings and programs you can take, everything from attacking NASA to laser experiments to photography experiments to music to you know street activism. Take, take your pick. And so that was just kind of a, a, kind of a cool little thing. Yeah, who knows? Maybe one day we'll have Flat Earth, Flat Earth University, but not yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, can a malfunction occur in the dome? Like, how, yeah. Wait, say say that one more time. You you were breaking up a bit. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Can there be a malfunction in the, in the dome? Oh, 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 okay, okay. And and and, and just yeah, we're, we're we're starting to pick up a little bit of a lag. It I is. think that comes with time, but. Can, can there be a malfunction in the dome? Is the system perfect? I don't think it's necessarily perfect. I think there's been versions of this, and I'm not saying that God isn't perfect or anything like that. I think that God learns things like anyone does. And uh, mm, yeah, so, there is, yeah. so why, why wouldn't there be uh, versions? I mean, come on. We, we know a long time ago that there was a supercontinent called Pangaea. You know where all the continents were grouped together and then spread apart and by the way that pangea continent works a lot better on the flat model than it does a globe cool yeah thanks um so in the documentary flat earthers and engineers they prove the curvature of the earth using a ring laser gyroscope right um <laughs> and yet they still believe the Earth is flat. Do you think this ring laser gyroscope is actually evidence, or is it just no, 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 not, not at all. 
Um, yeah. Okay, first off, the power of editing. No, I, I got gotcha. you. And by the way, we're 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 getting a huge lag again, but we'll 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 power through it because I've only got a few minutes left. So, power and editing. First thing is that the director of this film, which was not me, by the time we got to the end, hated Flat Earth, hated it. Um, and the reason he did was because younger people were asking about it, and he at that point didn't take us too seriously until there were young people involved. And then he was like, okay, I got to put my foot down. Um, Bob and the laser gyro, what can I tell you? Something is moving. The question is, is it the sky or, yeah. or is it the ground? Uh, if you do a time lapse of the sky, of course, it looks like we're moving to 15 degrees. Or is the sky moving or are we moving? And for up until about 500 years ago, everybody said, well, the sky is moving because and that we're on a stationary object. And then science came in and says, no, 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 no we're moving and the sky is stationary so and but yeah but to your point it's like no nobody was going to quit flat earth because at that point we were doing so many other experiments especially long distance photography and laser tests that were showing no curvature of the earth it's like yeah they can show what they want it's it's too late yeah we've got just you know like a like a 12 second delay now so last last question because i i gotta i gotta go to okay. this next interview okay. interesting so where do you think this flat earth movement is going in the future? Do okay. you think it's going to grow? Gotcha. To, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so... Millions, maybe? Um, as far as flat earth moving in the future, it's hard to say right now because every time that I think it starts slowing down, something new pops up. Um, like, for example, we didn't think the documentary was even really going to get made, the first documentary. And then we didn't think it was going to get in film festivals and definitely, you know, didn't think it was going to get bought immediately. So, and then we didn't think celebrities were going to start talking about it. But now there seems to be a dialogue everywhere. We have hundreds of me regional meetups. Um, I've got, in fact, I'm doing a conference down in New Zealand in, uh, at the end of April. I'll be flying down there uh, near my birthday. And there's another conference in UK. There's one in Amsterdam. There's one in Dallas. There's one in uh, Calgary. There's one in Los Angeles that I just got back from. So I don't know. I mean, sky's the limit, apparently. I, I don't know where it's going to go, but it just won't, it won't slow down.